you. Beautiful analyst Neil Tanaba on the left and Kathy Abernathy on the right. Joining us this morning to talk about last night's debate between David Valadeo and Rudy Solis, both running for California's 22nd Congressional District. Neil, Kathy, thank you for being in. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so uh, last night we heard that debate between these two candidates who are essentially neck and neck in this uh, closely watched race that's being watched across the country. A recent poll by Nexstar Media Group and Emerson College shows that Solace has a 0.4% edge over Republican incumbent David Valadeo. But 10% of voters say they don't even know who they're going to vote for yet. Uh, Kathy, I'll start with you. Do you think that our candidates did a good job of proving their points last night? Well, the candidate I watched uh, the most was actually Rudy Salas because I thought three things showed a lack of understanding. Number one, uh, he talks about, uh, I, I'm glad Valadeo brought up the cost of housing in California is so high because Sacramento puts on one third of the cost of your home is just a bunch of rules and extra things that California makes a home builder build. And, and then Rudy Salas' response says, well, Congress can overturn that. Well, we have a 10th amendment and actually California and other states can, can set their building standards, but that, that just showed me something. The other thing he said on the question of Israel was, uh, Rudy Salat said that, well, he'd like to see a Camp David Accord, something like that. Okay, well, that was Anwar Sadat of Egypt, who was actually a regular, sane leader of a country. And uh, that was 45 years ago. And today, who would show up there's no president in Lebanon, they haven't had one in two years, just run by Hezbollah. Uh, who, what Muslim Arab leader is gonna show up to sit down with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and the president? So that's not a feasible response. And then when he said that he doesn't vote until the I'm in the Sacramento until the final version. Well, the whole point of voting is to try to change the bill by you know amendments and deletions and that sort of thing. So I thought, I thought if you watched it last night, I did not think that Rudy Salas sold himself very well. Uh, Neil, uh, what is your take? Yeah, I think both candidates actually just tried to pitch themselves as bipartisan. Um, I think Rudy Salas has a record of actually being very, very bipartisan within uh, the state legislature. Um, and I think David Valadeo, uh, Rudy was able to expose him a little bit, especially when it comes to uh, the fact that he's voted against things like uh, capping the price of insulin, uh, especially in a district here in which uh, you know so many people suffer from diabetes. I think that um, overall, I think Rudy did do uh, a good job at, at pitching himself, but I think again for the voters. Um, you know, both of them really pitch themselves as as bipartisan, um, but I think there's more evidence and proof uh, on Rudy's side of being a bipartisan. I think what's going to be really interesting in this race is um, looking to see if Republicans will, you know, hold their nose and vote for Valadeo after you know he's kind of running away from Trump's policies right now. He voted to impeach Trump in 2020. Um, are they going to stay loyal to him, even though he was technically not loyal to their party leader? I think that's that's what we're we're probably going to see in November. You think they could just abstain? I think it's possible that we see some Trump voters that are very loyal to uh, to the former president um, abstain from voting for for David Valadeo for those reasons. And, and Valadeo did not discuss last night who he was going to vote for uh, next month. Do you think that what what uh, Niels just said? And that point, do, does that hurt or help him? That he didn't say who he's gonna vote for for president. And, and, and yeah, yeah I, I don't know why he said that. I, I found that a little much. <laughs> but uh, I, I think the one thing for Valadeo, he wins when Donald Trump's on the ballot. And he doesn't when Donald Trump isn't on the ballot because Trump pulls in voters that don't normally vote. They, he, they, they're a group of people, voters, that have a passion for president vote on certain occasions. And you think so they will still support think, Valadeo despite his past? I, because they will be turning out for Trump and they'll just vote the ticket. Okay, so this is going to be a tight race. What do you, the candidates need to do in order to win? Uh, that poll showing Salas has a very slight edge right now. Well, it's interesting, All we were just talking about all the advertising that they're doing on television, radio, and the mail, and everything, and, and it's still that tight. But, you know, for Californians, they just now, in fact, they don't yet, they're going to get in about a week, their ballots, and that gets people thinking more and focusing more. The, the whole area doesn't focus on who they're going to vote for uh, months in advance, or yeah. weeks in advance, or even today. So, well, those undecided folks, we'll hear from them pretty soon, but and they'll make their decisions. 
So I don't, I don't think it's odd that it's close right now. Okay, and so again, we're really close here. What do you think that Salas needs to do to push himself over the edge? I think he's doing it right now. He's going out, and I, I've been, I've, I've witnessed it. He's going out and knocking doors. Uh, every opportunity he gets, I think there's a lot of folks that are really energized to make sure that that Rudy can can get this win. Um, but it's going to come down to, you know, unfortunately, with Citizens United and the ultimate uh, ability to just spend, you know, money um, in in uh, in political ads and and mail. It's going to come down to how much money gets gets put in this race for turnout. And, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. With, with such a tight race, how yeah. long could it be before we even know the outcome? I mean, you know, I always say that this could be the last district counted because um, you know I think our our, uh, our elections office Kathy has has talked about this a lot as well um, you know I, I think they're very meticulous in making sure that everything is is uh, is counted properly um, but as well uh, you know there's a lot of rural areas ballots coming in um, it's taken historically a long time to, to make sure uh, this district and it's possible that this is the district that you know really decides who has wow. the uh, the majority in the house wow. so okay well, so so, again, it is being watched across the country, uh, and it is very close this morning. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We Actually, I'll add, six years ago, we had results by 11 p.m. We were having big victory parties. It's just, you know, the more modern, I guess, we get, the slower it gets. Do you, do you think that <laughs> there's any chance that happens this year? And I doubt it. Okay. <laughs> If, 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 if Dems have a huge turnout, and really that's what it is for Rudy, is that this district is blue. Um, he just needs to get a lot of people to turn out. And if there's a huge amount of turnout and a huge blue wave, then we'll know pretty quickly uh, on November 6th. All right, if, we'll have uh, to wait and see. Yeah. All right, Neil and Kathy, thank you, thank you for being in with us this morning. You. We appreciate it.